Hello everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and I'm sorry it's been a while since I've done a video. I've been quite busy working on a different game called Aridia, The Paths We Dare Tread, and I'll include a link to it in case anybody wants to check it out. It's on Kickstarter now, but in any case, I'm excited to show you this game. This is a game from the 2021 league that I'm in. And so far, I'm actually undefeated in my bracket for the league. So we'll see if that continues with this game. Let's jump in. We decided to use two action tokens for free people. I am the free people. My opponent is Orca556. And this is our first game that we're playing together for the league. We'll reverse roles in the next game that we play. So my opponent allocated one eye, rolled zero, got three musters. That's always nice to see as shadow. And I started with fear fire foes. Obviously it's quite powerful for the free people if you can get the north to war early in the game because you can often do a very good job of defending the north, Woodland Realm and Erebor, and you can often make some threats militarily too. So this is a long game. I will try to go relatively quickly. So at least for the moments that don't matter too much. So my opponent starts by mustering Sauron, mustering Isengard. That's a fairly standard opening. And now I have to decide so because I have Fear Fire Foes, and with these dice, I can actually get Aragorn on turn one. I can use a ring to separate Aragorn. Then I can use a Will of the West to move. Then I can use Fear Fire Foes with this muster to move again, which if I had another companion out, like if I brought Gimli or Legolas or somebody with two movement, or even a Hobbit if I go uh, to Dol Amroth, I can actually get the North to war on turn one, and then proceed to crown Aragorn with my last die. So this is a great question. Think about it for yourself. With this situation, there's one eye. Would you spend a ring and get the north to war and get Aragorn crowned round one? As it turns out, I thought about it, and I am always reluctant to give Shadow a ring if I can avoid it. And against only one eye, I decided to move twice, thinking that I'd be able to play Fear Fire Foes hopefully later and maybe get Aragorn crowned. So uh, I decided not to do that. I just move and I'm safe. That's pretty standard. And then my opponent starts organizing uh, their armies in Gorgoroth and Mordor. And then I move a second time. And here I get hit. And an eye is drawn for one reveal. And obviously I didn't want to get hit, didn't want to get revealed. But now that you're faced with a one reveal, what do you do? So obviously one option is just to lose Gandalf here. Another idea, and the benefit of losing Gandalf is that then you'll have Strider's ability and you'll be able to hide. Another idea is just to, you know, be revealed and that's fine you can keep Gandalf as guide and you know next time because you don't want to lose Gandalf to a one or you could lose a random companion and the benefit of losing a random companion is you could lose a hobbit who could then end up right over here in the north exactly where you need them for fear fire foes and there's another rule which is not often used but is a rule which is if the composition of the fellowship changes you may appoint a new guide so what you could do if you lose a random companion is whoever you lose you could then after that make strider the guide assuming obviously strider is not the random companion so think about what you would do these are two sort of early game questions that really influence the whole sort of course of the game if you had chosen to make aragorn king on round one giving a ring obviously none of these movements would have happened and here's a moment where you have the chance to decide to lose gandalf right away or take a random or just take one corruption so decide what you would do what i did was lose a random companion because my thinking was, if I lose a Hobbit, as I mentioned, I could get Fear Fire Foes. You know, if I end up losing Gandalf, okay, you know, not great to lose him to a one, but I'll probably, you know, Saruman's probably showing up this round, so probably could get Gandalf soon. And, you know, Legolas or Gimli or Bormir, fine. The only bad result is Strider. 
And that's only one out of seven chance. So that's what I decided. And Strider got drawn. <laughs> so, so this is bad, right? I just lost Strider to a one on the first turn of the game. And, you know, I, maybe that was a dumb risk. I, I don't know. I'm really curious to hear your thoughts in the comments. Would you, would you have done that? Do you think that was just a really stupid risk that I just took? I mean, one out of seven, 14%, you know, not, not the highest chances, but obviously not a 0% chance either. So yeah, so that happened turn one, a little demoralizing and, um, you know, that happens. So, and on top of that, the fact that it was an eye and not just a one reveal, because the eyes at least would, would make it harder when my opponent plays the, the tile drawing cards later, but it was an eye. Okay. So my opponent though, interestingly uses a muster to move this unit onto the fellowship in Holland. It's a little hard to see because of the reveal icon, but there's a unit in Holland now and you know, I, I, I don't know that I would have done that. I probably would have prioritized getting Saruman here because it's an extra die and, and why not? I mean, you'll still have time to put that unit onto the fellowship later next, next round. So, okay. But you know, one die, not the biggest deal. All right. And then I go ahead and muster elves. My opponent draws a card, drew a strategy card there. And then I muster elves again because, you know, I need to be able to defend the elves. Seems like it's, you know, reasonably likely that they'll get attacked. And if not, then maybe Kyrdin's ships at some point in the future. So, all right. And then my opponent draws a character card here. All right. Definitely probably one of the worst starting turn ones I, I can imagine having. Yeah. And then, and then I love that the deck taunts me. I just, I just drew challenge of the king. So, but Aomer is obviously a good a good card. All right. So I say the fellowship is good. And my opponent taunts me by saying, is it though? <laughs> Which I really enjoy. We had, we had a nice, nice banter during, <laughs> during this game. I admit uh, a little sad, but they have hope. Okay. And, ha and he's, they say have fun in Moria. So we'll see how Moria goes. All right. My opponent allocates one. I rolls three and I get two movement. So I go ahead and hide my opponent, you know, moves armies around. And I go ahead and move into Moria. And maybe I would be a little more careful if my opponent had more character dice, but my opponent doesn't have any character dice and no rings. So even if I get revealed here, I'm going to be able to, to hide. Okay, so let's see. I'm safe. So obviously that's a little bit of good luck there. Five dice and no sixes meant that I was able to move into Moria. And then next round, I'll be able to move right away first action to get past Moria. So at least if I get revealed, I'm not getting two tiles out of Moria. I'm only getting one tile out of Moria. All right. So my opponent moves. It looks like they're preparing to attack Gondor. I think about getting the Elves to War, but I don't want to give my opponent the Witch King too soon. So I go ahead and play Aomer, and then my opponent gets Saruman now. That seems good. And I get my armies in position. You're, it's nice to get a decent sized army in Westamnet so that they can move into Helm's Deep and really make Helm's Deep a much harder target. If you don't get any elites or leaders into Helm's Deep, it's just, it can really be a cakewalk for Shadow. So I want to be prepared for that. And because I'm intentionally not putting Gondor to war, at least too soon to give my opponent the Witch King, I wanted to go ahead and move one unit into Minas Tirith. You know, maybe I could have used that muster to muster Gondor once so that when I, my opponent attacks as Gilead, I'll have a chance to muster an elite into Minas Tirith. But it felt like the difference between an elite and a leader isn't that big. And I really wanted to get these in position, these units into position in West of Net. So that's what I decided to do. All right. So next round, my opponent has eight dice to my four, and we'll see what happens. So my opponent allocates two eyes here. Obviously, they are really focused on corruption, and I think that's fine when I have such a bad start. I think that that could make a lot of sense. So I get a pretty good roll. I have a, um, 
a character die, which I want, and a Will of the West. So if I manage to kill off Gandalf, I'm going to be able to get Gandalf the White back, turn three, which is not bad. And I have Fear Fire Foes, so I can send Gandalf to Grey Havens or Rivendell and then trigger Fear Fire Foes, which could be good because my opponent's going slow enough. I'll still have time to build up in the north a bit. All right, so I go ahead and move. And at this point, I'm not too upset if I get hit. I can lose Gandalf, but I get missed, and that's obviously good too. All right, my opponent goes ahead and plays Orc Patrol right here. And... You know, I think that makes sense. Anytime you have a chance for a two for one, you, you know, by by drawing this reveal here, I'm going to get revealed through Moria and my opponent gets to draw an extra Moria tile. There was a chance that I might have used a ring to try and make sure I kill off Gandalf this round. But, you know, I'm not I'm not too upset at this. Uh, zero reveal gets drawn and then a two reveal. So I certainly lose Gandalf to the two. I feel fine with that. And I'm happy to be able to get Gandalf this round. I play King Brand's Men here because I want to cycle uh, strategy cards. And I'm not in such a rush to get the North to war with with Fear Fire Foes. So I'm happy to just get, get a few more units there first and cycle the, the strategy card. Okay. My opponent gets the Southrons and Easterlings to war here. It's a little bit, I, yeah, I mean, that's, that's fine. That's totally fine. All right. And then attacks into Osgiliath and then I pass here and then they attack into Minas Tirith. And what's interesting to me is that they used a army muster to make this attack instead of a character because this actually puts Gondor to war. So they could get the Witch King here. And I think in general, you know, when when you can get extra action dice, the sooner you can get them, the better. So that's, you know, not the hugest deal, but can make a difference over the course of the game. All right. So I go ahead and start recruiting in Dol Amroth while I have the chance because I'm just a little worried about this army crashing into Dol Amroth before I have a chance to reinforce it. So I'm doing that now while I have the chance. All right, Denethor's Folly, obviously nice to play when you're besieging Minas Tirith. Certainly makes it a more reliable um, combat. And then I get Gandalf in Grey Havens. So the slight difference between Grey Havens and Rivendell is Grey Havens lets you get to Ered Luin or the Shire or Bree. And uh, Rivendell only lets you get to these northern locations, but not the dwarves. So... This way, it's sort of in the dark if I'm going to get Book of Mazarbal or Fear Fire Foes. My opponent doesn't know yet. Really minor, but that's why I go there. Okay, so my opponent moves Nazgul. I, I think that makes sense. You know, good to get more leadership in Minas Tirith before you attack. The Witch King can show up there, and you'll have five full leadership. So, you know, I think that's fine. Good to have a Nazgul on the Fellowship and to harass them. All right. So I draw the Grey Company. I'm just getting a bunch of Strider Aragorn cards. The character deck is laughing at me for losing Strider round one. Okay. And my opponent has some nice variety of things. Cruel Weather here and Nazgul Strike. So lots of good things. Okay. So my opponent allocates two cards again. So, you know, they're, they're playing corruption game. I think that can make a lot of sense. And they roll one more and I got zero movement. I didn't even, I can't even hide here. So, you know, I would consider using a ring maybe to, to move, but I can't even move. So I'm not going to play a ring here. And fortunately, I have some useful cards to play. I'm happy to play Celeborn's Galadrim. I'm happy to play Fear of Fire Foes. Maybe I'll cycle into something useful with uh, Celeborn's. So... These are all, I'm in an okay position for having such an awkward role. These musters, I'm perfectly happy to use. I have Gondor at war. I can get the elves to war. I'm about to have the north at war. So th these are these are all fine. Okay, so start with Celeborn's Gladream to cycle into my cards, see what I get. And I draw guards of the Citadel. So now I have a third very useful playable card with my third Palantir. This all worked out okay. 
So my opponent musters the Southrons and Easterlings to war. And again, you know, I think they wanted to do that because of mustering of long planned war. And so it's not bad to get those units, but I again would probably favor the Witch King, get five leadership here, get an extra die. I would probably use the muster for that. Okay, I go ahead and play guards now because, you know, I, I just don't have anything useful to do with two Palantirs other than play guards and fear fire foes. It's useful to get the extra elite in now. I am going to overfill this, and so it's only an additional one hit point in a leader, but that's still good, and the leader will be able to dish out damage over the long run in this combat, in this uh, siege. All right, so my opponent attacks Minas Tirith here. Now, I guess that makes sense. Obviously, it would have been nicer to have five leadership there, but they don't play a card. They get one hit. I get two hits. Good job, leader. That leader that I just put in there got the hit, so nice job. And then my opponent loses an elite. I think that's fine. I mean, the one other option is lose two regulars, and then you can backfill it with these units from North Athelion more easily. All right, I go ahead and muster while I have the chance. I know that I'm going to use this other muster to fill this up with elite, so I go ahead and get a unit and pull our gear now while I can. No, I think about that more and decide to play Fear Fire Foes first. So, yeah, I mean, I think the ordering doesn't matter too much here. I guess I'm thinking, ah, I want to start mustering up a Dale a little bit, and who cares about pull our gear? I don't know. I guess we'll see. A wizard is never so made. I go to the Shire, he North he goes to War, my when opponent... He means attacks Pilar gear now I guess because they saw me considering mustering in Pilar gear maybe I should have mustered in Pilar gear so that didn't happen but muster in Pilar gear and I mean they attack Pilar gear and there it is so now I can't muster in Pilar gear anymore I go ahead and muster an elite in Dol Amroth while I have the chance because I just want to make sure that's as packed as possible I want to make it hard for Shadow to get any more easy victory points or ideally I want them to have no easy victory points so at this point, I muster into Lasarnach because my opponent doesn't have any movement. So I know that these guys can go into Osgiliath and then just cause trouble. Maybe I'll draw into scouts. I'm not really sure what I'm thinking there. I guess it just sort of threatens scouts if I draw scouts and they'll have to be sort of sneaky about it. They'll have to be, sorry, Shadow will have to be cautious about, about where to attack if they want to attack into Osgiliath. I don't know. Maybe this is a silly waste of time, but it makes it a little bit harder. Just slows them down a little. All right. So they play Musterings of Long Planned War. Okay. That was their plan for getting everybody to war. So, you know, these units are kind of far away, but they are going to try and bring them out to the front and it'll let them reinforce these battles in, in Gondor. All right. Corsairs of Umbar, obviously... A great card but now maybe not as useful so they'll probably just use that for a very effective combat and i only roll one character so you know again they allocated two and rolled two eyes so combats military are just going slowly but the fellowship is just inching along they they had you know obviously it's bad to lose strider but then i made it through moria not too badly so you know i would have i would have been happy to move once a turn against sixes. So this is this is slow going. All right, I don't need to hide right away because my opponent has no characters and no Palantirs. So yeah. All right, so I go ahead and move armies. I'm happy to get this army into Osgiliath to mess with my opponent's plans and, and I drew scouts. So I did draw scouts. Now if they attack into Osgiliath, I can move into Minus Morgul and, and mess with them. So my extra movement is with this unit to Etenmores. This this threatens Angmar if I ever want to go there, or it also allows me to reinforce Rivendell when the Elven reinforcement pool is just relatively small. So it's nice to be able to reinforce. I can reinforce Rivendell with this guy. I can reinforce Woodland Realm with these guys, and then Lorien can just muster up. And, and it might even let me dr play Cirden's ships to help Gondor if I need to. All right, so my opponent gets their armies moving, and they occupy Minas Morgul. So that now lets them attack safely into As Asgiliath, which I think was a nice play. All right, I go ahead and hide the Fellowship, because maybe eventually they'll be able to make progress again. My opponent attacks Minas Tirith here. Again, I... 
I don't know. I think I would muster the Witch King here to get five leadership, and then it lets me cycle combat cards. So, all right. They play no card, but they get two hits. Obviously, that's good. And I get four hits. So, you know, not great for them, but doing two on eight dice is, isn't bad with no card. I play File of Galadriel because that's good for the Fellowship, and I need to play Palantirs. I don't have any particularly other playable cards here, so I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do with my other Palantir. My opponent musters into Orthanc, always good to get ready, and I draw a strategy card. Obviously, it's not, it's not great to draw a strategy card into six cards, but... I think basically any other strategy card that I draw other than Path of the Woeses is playable. I mean, I have an army and a muster, so the vast majority of cards that I draw here are going to be playable, but um, I drew one that wasn't playable, so that happens sometimes. I don't know. what I don't know what else I could have done with that Palantir. I could have used a ring to move, but I don't want to give my opponent a ring. If you have suggestions on what you would have done with that Palantir, I'm, I'm curious to hear it. My opponent gets the Witch King now and brings them into the safer location of North Athelion. That makes sense. And I just muster up more. I don't know this unit in Las Arnach. Again, maybe a mistake there. I don't know why I'm bothering with that. It's just to slow them down, I guess, a little bit. It does prevent the um, card that lets you move to. So... Um, I think Shadows Gather or Shadows, uh, not Shadows Moving, but the, the one that lets you move two armies, two spaces. So they could have moved from Pilar Gear to Minas Tirith. Though, th yeah. Anyway, I don't know if that's a useful thing. If you if you have suggestions on what you would have done instead of, instead of that, I'd be curious to hear. But half a muster, I don't know. All right. So I'm going to end up discarding two cards. Obviously, I'm not happy about discarding two cards, but... These are, these are kind of tough choices. I'd be curious to hear what you would pick. Out of Book of Mazarbul, obviously that's useful because Gandalf can get the dwarves to war. Heroic Death is a powerful combat effect. Sudden Strike, another Sudden Strike. Spirit of Mordor Scouts, Last Battle, obviously Daylight is a very powerful defensive effect. Heroic Way, or Heroic Death, and Ents. So I think I ended up discarding, let's see... Challenge of the King, I show my opponent because I lost Strider turn one. And I think, let's see what I got rid of. I actually don't remember. So I got rid of Path of the Woes. So I got rid of two Sudden Strikes. You know, Path of the Woes is obviously good, can really surprise Shadow, but Rohan's really far from war. And it's not that good of a defensive combat effect. I like these other ones for for combat defense they're just more powerful so that's what i do my opponent allocates two eyes again and rolls two more and i get a perfectly fine perfectly fine roll there i muster first because my plan is to save these character movements to try and you know i don't know i don't know there's it's Eventually, I'm going to move. My opponent's going to play nasty character cards, but that's how it goes sometimes. All right. Start with Book of Mazarbul. Get the dwarves straight to war. Now I can start mustering up dwarves. And my opponent attacks into Asgiliath to reinforce the Minas Tirith attack. They go ahead and take it. I muster into Dale. Sure. Seems fine. I mean... Dale is a, a very useful mustering point. It allows you to defend Woodland Realm and Erebor, and it lets you threaten a variety of military locations. It's three spaces away from Dol, Dol Golder. Sorry, I shouldn't have done that. Hopefully that doesn't mess up the replay. Three spaces away from Dol Goldor and four spaces away from Mount Gundabad. So, you know, maybe if the Fellowship is going super slowly, I can think about military. I only have five dice. Obviously, it's much better to be able to do military stuff with six dice if you're going to have Aragorn out there. But, you know, that wasn't meant to be this game. Also, my opponent is allocating a lot of eyes. So that does lead me to the possibility of military. 
Okay, they go ahead and take out Lasarnach. I go ahead and muster more in Dale. I'm starting to think, hey, if they're really going to allocate a bunch of eyes, maybe military. And then they play Shadow is Moving, get a bunch of units, get, get a bunch of armies in good position. So that was, that was a really, I think, a really nice use of Shadow is Moving. It's often a little tricky to use that, but they were able to get their armies to the front and really start to take over Gondor. All right, I go ahead and move here. My hope is, you know, the Fellowship is not doing that horribly. I can move once per turn against sixes. And um, all right, so I get a two. I think about taking a random here because I could get a Hobbit into Fangorn, but in the end, because then that would turn on Ents. But in the end, I decide to just lose Legolas. And Gimli becomes Guide. All right, my opponent now plays Cruel Weather, which is beautiful because they get me into Moria, prevent me from declaring into Lorien. And then I go ahead and I don't want to move again right now. Um, so I use that character die as movement just to get Helm's Deep all squared away. And then they play Nazgul Search. So I, that's just, I think that was played really well. They managed to get two tiles out of Moria and the fellowship is revealed again and you know they draw a zero obviously not great not as bad as drawing an eye for them but you know they are thinning out the pool so um that is good here's what the hunt pool looks like now after that tile is drawn so all right that's how it goes nicely played i drew wizard staff obviously that's an easy discard now and I always like to see red arrow. This is this is like two and a half dice worth of cards because you get a muster and one and a half recruits. And I like the scouts effect. So this is a this is a useful card, I think. All right. They draw Day Without Dawn. Obviously that's that can be good. And did we roll? So my opponent allocates two eyes again, um, rolls one, and then I get, again, only one one um, character die. So I'm not getting into Lori in this turn. Fellowship is just going super slowly. I still hide because, you know, I still have hope for them. And my opponent gets some Nazgul. That seems reasonable. Muster more Nazgul, and I play the red arrow here. So I'm getting a bunch of musters. It is going to give me some chances for military stuff. And what other card am I going to play? There isn't really another useful card for me to play, so I use that for my Palantir. And that way, when I use these army musters potentially to move armies, I can get these units from Edoras into Helm's Deep as well. And now Helm's Deep becomes pretty good. All right, so Ringwraiths are abroad. And my opponent attacks Minas Tirith and manages to have a pretty friendly battle. I do two and they do two. So, you know, obviously not great for them. It would have been nice if they had wiped me out, but I could have done four and that would have been worse. All right, so I go ahead and muster some more. I'm getting some leadership. I get leaders by, um, by Dale. And the dwarves, obviously, that's useful. I'm starting to think some military ideas. A second deadly strife takes out Minas Tirith. So my opponent is now up to three victory points. And Denethor's Folly finally goes away. And then I start moving armies. So I move everybody except one dwarf into um, Dale. And I go ahead and take Angmar just because... This army is heading over to Mount Gundabad, and I don't want to have a second mustering point where they can muster a bunch of things. So that's why that happens. I will still have time to get these units from Edoras into um, Helm's Deep. All right, my opponent moves army is going to um, finish taking over Gondor, I guess. And... All right, so I muster in Erebor. I guess I see that my opponent is starting to maybe come for Erebor, and I want to go ahead and get those dwarves into Erebor while I have the chance, so I muster there. I do have scouts in case they attack into Iron Hills. I would use scouts um, to retreat that unit into Erebor. It'd still be okay. 
All right, so they now decide to move these armies toward Rohan, which is interesting to me. I guess they're maybe they're thinking they're going to get everybody to war soon. Go ahead and get Rohan to war also. Easy to get the elves to war. And then they can get Mouth of Sauron early in the game. I mean, not early, but well before the Fellowship makes it to Mordor. So that could be why they're doing that. I wonder about maybe, given how strong this Dol Amroth is, and given that Strider is, Aragorn is not around, and therefore you're totally safe from Dead Men of Dunharrow, completely taking out Gondor feels... A little appealing to me, but I guess converging on Rohan is good too. So, and maybe they think this army will be enough to take out Dol Amroth. Could be. All right, so I get through a day and a night and axe and bow, and this is tricky. I wonder if you have thoughts on what you would discard here. So, axe and bow, obviously, one corruption saved, and through a day and a night, very powerful combat, you know, pretty powerful combat effect and also very powerful card effect if you're going for military victory. So um, I think in the end, I decide to get rid of the last battle, which, you know, daylight is just a great effect, but I'm just not sure exactly where that's going to be usable in the near future. So I opt for other cards. I'd be curious to hear what you would have discarded in that situation. All right. So, my opponent again allocates two eyes, roll zero, and I got one Will of the West. So, I go ahead and use it right away because, and often I'm willing to save Wills of the West when I only have one of them to try and get Day Without Dawn out of the way. But, since I know for sure I want to move, I want to get into Lorien, or I, want, I just want to make progress, I just want to move once per turn. That's sort of my, my idea here. Move once per turn for the next one, two, three, four, like six turns, and then I'll make it to Mordor. It'll be fine. Um, you know, military, I'm, I've defended a lot of places quite strongly. So I think it's going to, you know, it's not obvious where additional victory points are coming from for Shadow. So I feel like I have time with the Fellowship. I'm going to go slowly. Move once per turn. If you know you're going to move, better to move. So especially with the Will of the West. So I go ahead and move. And my opponent did have Day Without Dawn. Um, so they could have played it if I hadn't used it right away. So I do use it. And they don't hit me, which... Oh, sorry, I'm wrong. They did hit me. They hit me on a six. Good job, Nazgul. But they don't reveal me. So I still have the option of going into Lorien. And now that I have one corruption, I'm thinking, sure, I'll definitely go into Lorien. That sounds very pleasant. I'll do some military stuff. Maybe at some point I'll move out of Lorien. But um, that's my plan right now. So my opponent, let's see, moves... Uh, move some armies, going to take care of Rohan. Rohan is going towards war. And they very intelligently leave one behind in Druid and Forest. That prevents Path of the Woses. So they don't know that I discarded Path of the Woses. But Path of the Woses lets you teleport a Rohan army to Minas Tirith. And if Minas Tirith is under siege or controlled by Shadow, then you get to put it in an adjacent location, either Druid and Forest, Asgiliath, or Lasarnach. So by leaving one unit... In Druid and Forest, Asgiliath, and Lasarnach, they are preventing me entirely from using Path of the Woses. And in fact, if Minas Tirith is controlled by Shadow, you don't even need a unit in Minas Tirith. It's not bad to leave one there in case I counterattack from somewhere. But Okay, so I go ahead and move to Westamnet to make sure that this unit makes it in. And I proceed to move this army to, you know, start a military attack because what else am I going to do? I need to buy some time. So, and it seems like my opponent is not rushing to take Erebor, so I feel like I have time to take Erebor. I am a little bit worried about leaving Woodland Realm undefended from from this army, but it just, it feels to me like they're not doing that. It's a little risky, and if they bring this army in, maybe I end up defending Woodland Realm. So I haven't like 100% committed this army. All right, opponent attacks Westamnet. It did feel like they were going that direction, and I play scouts to save this army, and now Rohan is at war. So I go ahead and muster an elite into Rohan, and if they attack me, if the Witch King attacked me here, I probably would have a field battle, and especially because I have two more musters, and... I thought about attacking out right away, 
but um, they're mustering up. So while Edoras is still available, I muster, I think I muster into Edoras, yeah. So I muster a regular into Edoras and another leader into Helm's Deep. And, and then they attack Edoras. So, you know, I definitely like saving through in a day and a night if I'm going for military, but this is really a great chance of playing it. If I, if I inflict some hits here, I can counterattack with this army from Helm's Deep into, into Westamnet. So I do, they do get one hit on themselves with one, one, but they also eliminate the unit in Edoras, but the, the Edoras unit manages to fight back. So I do two hits and now they're down to only four, four combat dice, four combat strength. And I think that was a very smart play moving everybody into Edoras because had they moved only one in, I definitely would have counterattacked from Helm's Deep and had a decent chance at destroying the Witch King. So they don't even know what end, end cards I have, but I have Nameless Wood, which is two bonus hits. So I'm definitely eyeing that Witch King and that eight Nazgul leadership, all of their Nazgul are right there. So that would really set them back quite a lot. All right, they go ahead and attack Fords and uh, I get no hits and they get both. Obviously it would have been nice to save that leader, but that's how it goes. All right, so they play, they decide to mess with the fellowship more. And so they're playing Warren with Sorrow and Toil, and then their plan is to play Nazgul Strike and then reveal me and prevent me from getting into Lorien. So it is a little risky to play this, but they will they don't know for sure that I'm going for going for a declare in Lorien. But alright, so they play Nazgul Strike, they move Nazgul around, they defend Mount Gundabad, which is getting attacked and they miss the fellowship so you know that is good for the fellowship i'm going to be able to declare in lorian get rid of warn with sorrow and toil heal a corruption obviously that is lucky for me and i do happen to have mirror of gladriel if i took more corruption i could have used it to heal one but all right so that was lucky that was definitely a lucky moment all right dane ironfoot's guard i'm very happy to see that gives me a little more breathing room I don't have to muster up Erebor too much in advance. And Warn with Sorrow and Toil goes away. And that's how, as we said, they, they still allocate two eyes. And then they rolled... Uh, okay, I guess that time they allocated only one eye, but then they rolled three. And I get a very nice roll with Wills of the West. So definitely want to spend one in case they do have Day Without Dawn. And use it to move armies. Mount Graham is useful to avoid the Shadows on Misty Mountains. And I'm preparing to attack into Mount Gundabad. So they play Pits of Mordor. You know, they didn't actually roll any musters. So this is their only way of mustering in there. And then I go ahead and attack Mount Gundabad. And they go into Siege. And then they play Hill Trolls, which is obviously a good play. This, you know, th this is a pretty powerful army. Obviously, in, in a siege, this is obviously a powerful army too. So I'm. it's not obvious to me where, even if I take this, where my additional victory points come from. And with only five dice a turn, it's going to take a while. But, you know, I figure, why not? I can waste a little time for them, see what happens. So... I go ahead and muster up in the meantime because I'm not in a super rush to take this. I like I want to take this, but I also want to make sure I'm not giving up these strongholds in the north too easily. So I'm going to use these musters to muster when I can. It's interesting to me here they didn't use Day Without Dawn to get rid of this Will of the West. I don't know. I guess it doesn't matter too much. All right, so they moved the Witch King right here into Westamnet. And this is my moment to strike. I have Nameless Wood, two bonus hits. This is a chance. Come on, Rohan. So I attack into the Witch King. And they don't play a character card. I was worried about Dread and Despair, but they don't. And all I have to do is get two hits on fives with eight dice. And then the Witch King is dead. But I only get one. So I get one hit which I get therefore get two more and don't manage to destroy the Witch King. So they didn't do any hits back to me. Obviously, that's good for me, but I would have happily traded a few extra hits in exchange for destroying 
the Witch King at this point in the game. The other thing to think about here is, and I should have mentioned this earlier, um, Saruman is by himself in Orthanc. And so I have a chance to get a companion into Fangorn. And then at the start of next turn, first thing, play play this other end card that I have and, and destroy Saruman. If I had done it before the end of my turn, then my opponent could have moved army units back into Orthanc to defend against it. And I don't know that they would have. I kind of think they would have. So I decided to take the guaranteed route. It lets them use Saruman's die next turn, but I think it's going to be pretty surprising for them. And I have tokens, so it will let me it will let me ensure that I can go last. So my opponent go, goes ahead and moves into Fort's Vizen and takes Iron takes Iron Hills, and that's necessary because otherwise I could have attacked the Witch King again. So they had to do something with the Witch King. And then I decide to get the elves all the way to war. So maybe that's a mistake because it lets them get the mouth of Sauron next round. But I do want to free my elves to be able to attack. And my hand was already so full that I didn't want to just waste even more cards. It felt like kind of a waste. So that's why I decided to get the elves to war. Maybe that's a mistake. But I was also getting a little bit worried about Woodland Realm. And so it gives me a chance. If this Dual Golder army starts to head north, it gives me a chance to muster up Woodland Realm. So that was my thinking. All right. So they attack Helm's Deep now. And I have a very stacked army. This is great. I, this is like one of the best defenses of Helm's Deep I've ever managed in one of my games. Like this is... This is a super powerful army. That's going to be tough. I don't see how this army is going to be able to take out this army, but I guess it makes sense for them to try. Yeah. All right. So Fellowship is at zero movement. That was a mistake. We should have fixed that sooner. And then I go ahead and separate Boromir here, and they say, oh, no. <laughs> so they know what's coming. All right. So... Draw Swords and Ariador, Elven Cloaks. I don't know exactly what to get rid of here. I think I get rid of Swords of Ariador because... I don't know. I guess I feel like I can muster enough already. And I like my other cards more. I don't know. Maybe Elven Cloaks could have gone. That saves about one corruption, but... You know, the fellowship isn't looking so great. And if my hope is, if my opponent at some point stops putting more eyes in, I'll be able to move the fellowship. And I still have some hope of playing that. All right. So allocates one eye, rolls two. And I get a very nice roll. Very, very useful with all of these character cards that I'm happy to play. I can play Axe and Bow. I can play Elven Cloaks. Or I can go military and attack a bunch of places. So start by playing Ents, obviously, and Saruman goes bye-bye. All right. My opponent attacks into Helm's Deep and makes some progress. Actually gets a total of four hits this round, and I get three back. So they lose... They, they keep... Um, they go down to four dice because they want to roll maximum for we come to kill. I think that's that's okay. But I don't see how yeah, I mean they have 8 hit points to my 5 hit points. It's still possible they could they could defeat this army. All right. So, I don't even remember what I do here. Maybe I start to make some progress against Mount Gundabad. I don't know. I mean Gandalf can come over here and help get rid of these Nazgûl leadership. The, the thing about the thing about this army, I, I think if I pr press a bunch of times, I could this army could defeat the, the army in Mount Gundabad could defeat the army. My attacking army in Mount Gundabad could defeat the defending army in Mount Gundabad. But I think I would take a lot of hits. 
And so because the game is going slowly and Shadow isn't that close to getting 10 victory points, my inclination is to go a little bit slower in this attack, maybe take the time to get Gandalf up there, and then still have a sizable army here that will be able to maybe even d defend Mount Gundabad and still have leftovers to go somewhere else. Maybe if I get lucky, M we'll see. So I'm, I'm planning on taking that slow, but I don't know. I don't remember what I'm going to do with my dice. Oh, right. We have a long pause. So we, we actually have to pause the game for a couple of days and then I pass just to see what happens. My opponent attacks into Helm's Deep, gets two hits, but I get three back. And what do they end up doing? So I draw a card here because I don't know what other um, things I'm going to be able to do with my character cards, with my character dice, if I'm not going to move the fellowship a bunch here against three eyes. I feel like maybe at this point in the game, I'm starting to lean more towards military because my opponent really seems focused on corrupting the fellowship all right so they attack into helm's deep i could play ents rage right here they don't play a card i think my plan is hope this this attack goes poorly and then i don't know i don't know what card i play all right so i play heroic death here yeah, I guess I just, I want them to hold on. I don't know, maybe I could have played that before. All right, as it turns out, they get zero hits, so I don't even have to lose a leader, and I get two hits, so they lose their elite. And now it's three against three, and now I have a second chance to kill the Witch King. I have Ents Rage, which gives me plus two in my combat roll, so I need to roll three, four, five, or six on three dice, and if they miss, I get to reroll and hit on a five or a six. So I go ahead and take the chance to try and kill the Witch King for the second time this game. And unfortunately, I don't get enough. They play Isildur's Bane. I'm happy to see Isildur's Bane go away. They play Isildur's Bane. We get two hits each. So I don't know exactly what the averages are on that. I think I had decent chances of killing the Witch King for a second time. But I fail. Um, I do press because I'm willing to play Heroic Death and killing the Witch King here would be huge. I'd get to muster into Rohan again. I still have more. I mean, Rohan's muster pool is pretty big, so I'd still get to muster more into Rohan. So that's my plan. So I press, and then, of course, the Witch King retreats because he doesn't, or they don't want to risk it. And the Siege of Helm's Deep was broken. Way to go, Rohirrim. All right, so then my opponent musters into Orthanc, obviously needs to reinforce the Witch King. I muster into Helm's Deep again, and then they play Shadows Gather as a way of getting these these units into Fords of Eisen to defend the Witch King. And then I move Boromir and move Gandalf. And so that's going to let me use this character die if I want to fill up this army, have five elites in there and full... Um, and, and cancel the Nazgul leadership. So that's sort of playing the safest route. Oh, and the other thing about this in, in Mount Gundabad, my opponent could have orcs multiplying again or any of the muster cards into a siege. So they played Hill Trolls, they played Ulag High, but there is the, the Isengard unit, um, Goblin Men. And so that's the other reason why I want to be I want to be as patient as possible here to make sure do everything I can to make sure this is a as safe a combat as I can make it because I don't want what happened at Helm's Deep to happen up here though this is a giant army okay um, so they get Mouth of Sauron that's obviously uh, the correct play good to get Mouth of Sauron all right and then I move Gandalf in fully preparing this attack all right at the start of next turn I'm going to muster more into Helm's Deep and there we go. So uh, my opponent just, I guess, drew the Palantir of Orthanc and just discarded it. So that's satisfying. They can't even play it because Saruman is not in play. All right, two eyes, rolls one more. And I get, again, just a little bit of movement and a bunch of mustering. So, you know, as my opponent continues to allocate and roll all these eyes, I'm thinking, okay, well, I'll keep making progress on my military plans. I mean, I don't know where my 
next victory points are coming from besides Mount Gundabad, but, you know, if they're really slow on military, I can I can take somewhere else. I can build another giant army up. All right, so I go ahead and muster into Helm's Deep. I want to make that strong again. And into Dale, that's always a good point. The The northern mustering pool is just is pretty big, and so is Rohan, so I'm using it while I can. All right, Dreadful Spells gets one hit. I decide to lose the regular instead of the instead of downgrade the elite because I have enough musters and I want to be prepared to be besieged again. They obviously have a bunch of musters themselves. I anticipate those happening in Orthanc and then coming at Helm's Deep. So I just go ahead and muster again in Helm's Deep and also in Dale. They go ahead and retreat from Fords of Eisen. It's an interesting point. You know, I don't, I think it's pretty hard for this army to get, to get three hits. But with something like Sudden Strike, I could roll a total of 12 dice. So could I get three sixes on, uh, three sixes on 12 dice with Sudden Strike? Possible. So that's certainly the, that's certainly a safe, a safer play. They're going to muster up and then just come back. So that's fine. It's a little bit of wasted movement, but they don't seem to be in any particular rush. All right, so they go ahead and muster an Orthanc. I go ahead and try Mount Gundabad. I play Shield Wall just because, you know, they have four dice. They might get two hits. I'm going to end up discarding cards later. I definitely want to save Dane Ironfoot's guard. I don't need to worry about any of these other ones at this point. So I play it mostly because... I just want to try and preserve that army to be able to go somewhere else. I get lucky. I get two hits and they get two hits, which I reduce down to one. They shouldn't have rolled leadership. It doesn't matter. All right. So they decide to reduce twice. That makes sense. And at this point, I decide not to press because if they have orcs multiplying again, they're going to get to add one regular. Okay. Not that bad. I will be able to take next round and then go from take them from whatever they have down to zero so that's that's my plan and i think if they had the if they had the um orcs uh, not the, the goblin men card then they would have already played it so all right they muster more in Orthanc. i muster more in helm's deep i muster more in dale and they move into Fords of Eisen. That's interesting. I, I don't know. I, why not muster a little bit more while I have the chance? I know the mouth can give that as an army movement, but this this army isn't big enough to take Helm's Deep. I mean, not with a companion in there for leadership. So yeah, I now have six hit points plus a companion with four leadership. That's going to be tough. All right, so they attack Helm's Deep. I'm happy to go into a siege. I managed to use all but one regular of the Rohan force pool and had two good chances at killing the witch king so rohan nice job this game boromir good job all right so and my opponent knows i don't have any more ent cards so it didn't even make sense to leave them in fangorn and not that i mean saruman is already dead so boromir i think got a lot of got a lot of value all right, another heroic death. I'm very happy to see that. It's a powerful defensive card, and it's also useful on offense when you're attacking into a stronghold. It lets you soak up the damage from your with your companions or leaders as opposed to the hit points that you need to be able to press the attack. So I decide to get rid of... I'm pretty sure I get rid of Elven Cloaks here. Yeah, so I get rid of Elven Cloaks here because I'm thinking, okay, military, I can do it. And that's just one corruption, so I'll take it slow with the fellowship. All right, this time I get a bunch of characters and I could be moving more now here, but I just don't feel like I'm in a huge rush with the fellowship. Maybe I'll move a little bit, test the waters, but I'm also happy to finish off Mount Gundabad. So I start by using the Will of the West because I know that I want to muster and I just don't need to risk Day Without Dawn. So that's why I do it. If you know what you're going to do, it's worth doing. All right, so they muster a bunch in Isengard and then play Rage of the Dunlandings, which I think is really great. This is just a really nice army. I wonder why they went to South Downs and not Holland to pick up this extra regular, but 
okay, it doesn't really matter. And then I attack into Mount Gundabad and play Confusion, roll four sixes, and they roll two ones. <laughs> so this was, I mean, that battle went really well. I'm plus three on sixes right now. And I just got six hits against a stronghold. So, you know, that's I, I've definitely had good combat luck. This this army is coming my way, but given the size of this army left over, I'm I'm actually not worried about it. They're not going to be able to retake that. Like that's going to take a huge amount of effort to retake. And this is the benefit of having taken over Angmar. They they can't muster easily here. There is a card that lets them Shadows on the Misty Mountain will let them go to Mount Graham, but that's only a single card. And I just, I have such a big army here. I'm, I'm feeling pretty solid with this. All right, Mon Monsters Roused is nice. They can pick them up on their way. And I go ahead and move the Fellowship here because I don't have anything particularly pressing to, to move an attack with. Obviously, I want this army in Dale to, and this army in Erebor to come do something at some point, but I also don't want to leave too many easy um, victory points for Shadow. So I, I'm, it's really not exactly clear how I'm going to get my second victory point. I think my plan here is make a little progress with the fellowship. See what happens. That's a way to win also. You know, this army in Lorien could maybe come down to Orthanc. It's not that far. Maybe maybe that would have been something to consider. Muster once in Lorien and then just start marching towards Orthanc. But, I, you know, they have two musters showing. And yeah, I don't know that it. I don't know that it makes that much sense. All right, so I managed a safe movement. They go ahead and merge their armies and it looks like they're collecting everybody. I don't know yet if they're going toward Rivendell, in which case I would like to muster once in Rivendell or if they're coming up to Mount Gundabad. So because I want to do something else with these units. Um, and now I'm thinking, okay, maybe I can take, maybe I can take Moria if I muster up a bunch of elves here. Um, I start to move, I start to move this army somewhere. I, I honestly don't know where it's going yet, but I think whatever this army is like, this army is going to be able to hold pretty well. All right. So they now decide, okay, I'm going towards Mount Gundabad. I'm glad that I didn't spend any effort mustering in Rivendell because that wasn't their target. And I go ahead and muster in Lorien instead, thinking these guys will do something useful at some point. All right, they move Nazgul. Yeah, I don't, I don't really understand that. Why? Oh, this, sorry, I understand that now. This army didn't have any leaders. They actually didn't have any leaders, so they couldn't, they couldn't, um, they couldn't move with that character die. So that is another benefit of having killed Saruman. All right, five dice to nine. They, I kill, I, I discard Kindred of Glorfindel because I can muster there if I need to. And... Mithrakot and Sting, you know, I'm still thinking, hey, maybe the Fellowship can make some progress at some point. If they ever stop allocating a bunch of eyes, I can maybe much make, make progress towards Mordor. And this is just an incredibly powerful uh, effect for the Fellowship. So I'm saving it. And they've already played Nazgul Strike and Worn with Sorrow and Toril, which means it's completely safe to play it now, even outside of Mordor. They won't be able to get rid of it. I'll be able to use it when I want. All right, so they allocate two eyes. What? Three eyes. They allocated three eyes there and rolled one. So they are just, they're staying committed to the corruption strategy. And, and I think this is one of the most elegant pieces of design for War of the Ring that you can really, it's really a balance. You know, they are committed to stopping the Fellowship from moving. So I'm not going to move the Fellowship. I'll go ahead and try and get a military victory. I already have two victory points. I mean, I don't, I have three technically, but Angmar, I can't possibly hold, but Mount Gundabad, I can. I mean, this, this army can hold against this army. So, and if I was really worried, I could put Gandalf back in there, but I'm not really worried. I think, I think this army can hold, especially with cards like Heroic Death I have in here. So, 
All right, I roll a, and, and they didn't, they just didn't roll very many attacks. They only rolled six dice. You'd expect to get about th three attacks. They get one plus this one is the second one from the mouth. So, all right, I go ahead and play Mithril Coat and Sting here because what else am I gonna play? I have two Palantirs, I need to play something. And I still want to keep the threat of the Fellowship alive. If they manage to come retake Mount Gundabad and the combat really goes their way, then, you know, I can still be making a little bit of progress. All right, so they muster into, with their one muster, they muster into Moria. That is looking a little bit harder. And the thing about Moria, obviously it's close to the, all of these elves. And I can get there relatively easily with Gandalf. But there are a bunch of reinforcement cards that scare me about attacking Moria. And there are powerful combat cards like the Balrog can hit you in Moria. And Shadows on Misty Mountains can hit you. So I'm just a little wary about attacking Moria. Obviously, Dol Guldur is has more units in it. But it's, it's harder for Shadow to defend and retake the other thing is if i do go after moria and let's say it goes well this army can just turn around and come back to moria it's not it's not that far away for them so Goldor is just farther away from things so that's my thinking i'm sort of now thinking okay i'm just going to go after dull Goldor. i'm going to have a bunch of units i can muster up i still have time i can just go go after it so i muster in lorian it keeps my options open. This army can still come out and do something. We'll see where Shadow musters. They play Balrog, so okay. Um, yeah, I don't know what else is useful for them to play there. And it is it is a useful card. It basically gives them a hand size of seven. So that's not a bad play. With my other Palantir, I played Dane Ironfoot's Guard now. Why not? It seems like this army is not eager to attack into Erebor. So maybe I can... Just muster up a little bit more. New Powers Rising. Obviously can't play that because Saruman is dead. Obviously that's tricky, but Great Host can be a useful combat effect. So not quite as good on the defense, but could be good for, for this army to take out the army in Mount Gundabad. Could inflict a one point. All right. So... Um, I move, I thought about moving Gandalf into Mount Gundabad, but instead I move towards Carrick. This is going to let these armies, these three armies merge up, and then this army and Lorien will still be able to reinforce. So my plan right now is go after Dol Guldur. If something really bad happens, I can also just keep moving on towards, if I have a giant army, I can keep moving on towards Mordor, or I can keep going towards Orthanc if I have a big enough army. So we'll see what happens. All right. Shadow then, I think, reacts appropriately by moving this army to help out the defense of Dol Guldur, but they could be too far away, and it does let me, it does sort of free up the pressure on Erebor, so I feel free to leave fewer units in Erebor. So I don't know, I don't know about this move. This is, it makes sense to me, but it's also a little tricky. All right, so I go ahead and get these units ready. My thinking is maybe I'll get one more muster into Carrick or Dale with my force pool. I have one more elite north unit, so I could do that in Carrick or Dale, and then I can merge them in Old Forest Road, and then Nairs of the Forest, and then Dol Guldur, and then these units are available to reinforce it. So even if I end up losing Lorien or Erebor, as long as Mount Gundabad holds, they're not going to be able to get to 10 victory points. So I'm, I'm okay to leave. And maybe I could have taken even more out of Erebor and not, not worried about it, given that if they take Erebor and we're racing, I'm going to be able to win that race. Yeah. So actually, that's interesting. So that actually was a mistake. Even if they had left this, this army in Iron Hills, it would have been better for me to take more elites out of Erebor, thinking that I'm going to go after Dol Guldur. Yeah, I guess I'm still hedging a little bit with the Fellowship. I still have Axe and Bow. So, I don't know. It definitely seems like military victory is the best chance to win at this point. But if Mount Gundabad falls, then I might want to revert. 
All right, so they draw, they get orcs multiplying again, that is useful. And black captain commands, also good. They roll a bunch of musters, and I have sort of a, a flexible roll here. I start off by uh, start off by mustering into Carrick as planned, and they muster into Moria. I think that is reasonable. That certainly is a possible avenue of attack. They go ahead and try and retake Mount Gundabad. I go into siege, pass, and then they bring a full contingent. I really like that, and attack. They play Swarm of Bats, but manage to roll no sixes, and I get four hits. So, you know, that's not good. They do have Orcs Multiplying again, which can let them reinforce this. Because if they are besieging it, and this is a really cool use of it, even though I control the Stronghold, if they are besieging me there, they can play this recruitment card and recruit three units there. So they end up losing two elites, but I probably would have lost an elite and two regulars. And then when you play orcs multiplying again, you can fill that back up to 10 and still have an elite. So, and you get two more in Dol Golder. I don't know that that matters so much at this point, but you could. All right, I go ahead and merge up my armies, leaving one unit behind in Dale. I'm not sure why. I guess I'm still worried about this army taking out the, the army in Vale of Karnan, taking out Woodland Realm too easily, knowing that I'm now going to part ways, but probably was a little bit unnecessary. All right, they muster into Dol Golder. I move towards it. They think about mustering again into Dol Golder, but then decide to muster into Orthanc, which, I mean, they are right. I could eventually get or think so maybe it makes sense to start mustering up there i'm not sure all right and then i think about separating companions into the narrows of the forest to merge up but instead i decide you know what let's let's just attack first i could potentially win this round if i attack in the field battle goes well and then and then i manage to win the combat it's like it, it is possible I have Mighty Attack, so Gandalf can use uh, Mighty Attack. So I go ahead and attack in, and then we discuss the field battle, and then they decide not to do a field battle and go straight into the Stronghold. The one thing that I'm not sure if they knew was that we could have one round of field battle, and then if I press, then they could go into the Siege. So that is something to realize. You can have, if, if somebody is, like if I attack in, Declare the field battle first, have one for one round of field battle, and then if I press the attack, then you can retreat into a siege instead of continuing. So I, I feel a little bad about that. Maybe I should have uh, reminded them about that, but there was a chance I could get five hits or even more than five hits because I could do sudden strike and then on top of that get a bunch of hits. So it's not it's not like totally crazy that they that they waste those four hit points, but I probably would have tried to whittle down the attacking army a bit. I don't know. So they they go into siege, and now they try and get this army closer. I guess they're bringing this unit in Orthanc not only to defend Orthanc, but also to reinforce the siege in Helm's Deep. I guess that makes sense. And I go ahead and try and win the game here because when you have a chance to win the game, that's good. So... If I win this battle and they can't retake Mount Gundabad, which seems very unlikely with that army, then I can win. So the combat goes my way. I get Mighty Attack round one with a total of two hits. And and then I go ahead and play Heroic Death just to soak up some damage. But because I get three hits there and then they only get one hit. And because the combat is going so well, I decide that it's better to lose a regular and keep my leader to have more rerolls because I'm, I'm hoping to win the game. So very rare to play heroic death, take a damage and still choose to lose a regular, but that's the way the combat's going. So that's a really minor improvement, I think, but, 
and then brave stand here, and then I get two more sixes. So that was the game. They don't have Grand, so they don't have any chance of retaking of retaking Mount Gundabad, and that is a military victory. And I still had these five units here who could have come over and supported it. So I guess this is sort of an example of it took a little while to get extra dice. So there were a few extra dice that Shadow lost out on. And they really focused on stopping the Fellowship, which, to be fair, they did. This is turn 14, and the Fellowship is one move outside of Lorien. So you can definitely, as Shadow, stop the Fellowship, but it may allow the Free Peoples to get a military victory. So I think finding that balance is really the key. Let's look at the statistics. So... I don't know. It may be the case that this is correct. I feel like I was plus on sixes. So I know that sometimes on a replay, the the dice are reversed, but it may be the case that I actually rolled quite a few more combat dice than them this game. That is possible. So plus six on sixes, that's pretty huge. And you can see that I was really low on characters and Will of the West and just very high on, on army musters. And their action their action rules were, were pretty average. So that was the game. Hope you enjoyed it. And see you again soon.